more power. Without it, gymnastics is impossible. Exceptional raw power can make the sport seem almost effortless. Can a gymnast ever have enough power? Can too much power distract from the artistry of this graceful sport? Tonight, we may answer some of those questions as America's most powerful gymnasts go head-to-head -head in the all-around competition of the U.S. Olympic Festival. The St. Paul Civic Center, the site of last night's boxing finals, to be the host venue for the next four days for the gymnastics competition. Hi everyone, I'm Bart Connor, and tonight we'll be featuring the men's all-around and team gymnastics competition. Tomorrow, we'll have the women's all-around and team, and on the weekend, we'll have the individual event finals for both the men and the women. And joining us on our telecast is Kathy Johnson, Olympic medalist. Kathy, this is an exciting opportunity to see a team that is really made up of both the juniors and the seniors on the men's national team. It certainly is, Bart, and it should make it very interesting for the viewer because we'll be able to see the progression of men's gymnastics from the first point that a junior steps into the national ranks right on through the elite development stage to some of our top senior ranked gymnasts. Now we've talked about the importance of raw power in the sport of men's gymnastics. We have some very powerful gymnasts here tonight. Maybe it's going to be the battle of the bruisers. We certainly have some of the physically strongest gymnasts here at the festival. In fact, they have a much denser muscle mass than many of the other gymnasts. Particularly watch for Scott Keswick and Chaney Humphrey, both of UCLA and both packed full of power and punch. And of course there's Bill Roth of Temple University, who's out of the gym personality equals his dynamic gymnastic style. In addition, of course, to those three favorites, Mark Warburton is here from the University of Nebraska. He's currently sixth in the U.S. squad. And Conrad Vorsanger from Stanford University, a world championship team member, and a very exciting young gymnast will be competing as well. So that's the men's all-around and team gymnastics competition. And we'll be back at the St. Paul Civic Center for the start of men's gymnastics right after this. Time now to take you to gymnastics right down on the floor beneath us. We start with a men's all-around competition there to tell you all about it. People who know Bart Connor and Kathy Johnson. Thank you, Barry Tompkins, of course, in the men's all-around gymnastics competition. The gymnasts will be competing on all six events. This is Josh Stein. He's getting ready for his vault. He's from Houston, Texas. He trains at the gymnast factory. And his coach is Kevin Mazika. Josh, of course, is one of the juniors that is competing here, as you mentioned at the top of the show, Kathy. It's a really exciting opportunity to see the juniors and the seniors competing together in the same event. He was fourth all around at the Junior National Championship. Kathy, I always thought that in men's gymnastics it was unfair because the men only get to do one vault. There's one shot in women's gymnastics in the all-around competition. They get to do two vaults. Uh, how do you feel about that? Well, they sort of equaled it out in, in the compulsory. Now we only get one vault, so we get a taste of what you guys have to experience. But it, it's such a relief to know if you have problems on your first vault, if you've got a second one, it definitely helps. Josh Stein. Nice, clean vault. That's a handspring pike front. Good position in the air, Kathy. Excellent position in the air. Just that one step on the landing will, will cost him. Josh, Josh, of course, this is his third year on the national team, and his vault is very powerful. Good push off the horse. Nice, clean form in the air. This is a very difficult vault to land because you're flipping forward, and you don't see the ground until your feet are exactly on it. Notice the position. Good, strong push. High, clean form in the air. And he drops out nicely. One big step, of course, Kathy, that'll be a deduction. But the fact that he did it piked made it much more difficult of a ball. Josh Stein, of course, 5 feet 5 and 130 pounds. And Kathy, we talked at the top of the show that some of these gymnasts are uh, pretty beefy here in this competition. 9.15. Josh, of course, is more the typical body style of a world-class gymnast. Exactly. Many of the gymnasts here are 5'10", 5'9", 150 to 160 pounds, and that's just really big for a gymnast. Getting ready to vault now. This is Mike Masucci. He competes at Penn State University, where his coaches are Carl Shire and Randy Jepson. Mike is originally from Matawan, New Jersey. 19 years old and a sophomore with a business major. 
This is actually his third Olympic festival. He competed in 87 in Chapel Hill. He took second place with the team competition there, and he was a member of the gold medal team last year in Oklahoma City. Mike uses the same vault we saw earlier and just a little bit short on a rotation that time, Kathy. He didn't have the same height that Josh had, and of course he stepped back, meaning he was short on the rotation. What do you think he needed to do in this? L his speed was ample here. He didn't have enough push off the horse right here as he makes contact yeah, to really hard. direct, redirect that forward momentum into upward momentum. A little shaky on that landing as well. I think a coach would say a little mushy on the horse. So Mike Masucci off to a reasonably good start for his North team. He's the fourth competitor. There are six competitors on each team. They will count the best five of six scores, so the lowest score can be dropped out. And his score is a 9.05. Now up from UCLA, this is Scotty Keswick. And typical of Scott, he shows very clean form in the air on a ball called a Kasamatsu. He's from Las Vegas, Nevada, but he attends school at UCLA. He's studying economics, 20 years old. Coaches are Art Sherlock and Yefim Furman. Scott has very clean form in the air. That's certainly typical of his style. He's really trying to squeeze out every extra tenth of a point. Notice how tight his feet are together throughout the vault. I like the way he stylizes right there and opens the arms out. Makes it much prettier. And of course, a hop like that in the landing is probably a couple of tenths of a point, Kathy. He was fifth all around at the 1990 USA Championships. Scott is the national ring champion as well. He's one of those powerful athletes we mentioned at the top of the show. Even though he's only 5'4 and 128, which is pretty typical size, and he scored very, a 9.4. 9.4 on that ball. Now we're going to go over to the still rings. This is Conrad Vorsanger out of Stanford University. Conrad was a member of the world championship team last year in Stuttgart. Introduced to the world a new move on the high bar, which I hope we get a chance to see later. And something you always like to see is a scholar athlete maintains a 3.2 grade point average. That's right around mine, Kathy, I think. <laughs> That's not what I heard, Bart. <laughs> Conrad was 12th in the all-around in the recent U.S. championships, and he really had a little bit of a rough time. He's had some illness this year. He's had some injuries. And since the world championships in the fall, he's really had uh, a rather shaky season. And... Uh, it's a very long season, Kathy, and I know for you some of those seasons uh, seem like they were never going to end. It certainly is. With the NCAA season alone, it's a very, very grueling uh, schedule with the dual competitions and all the way through to the national championships, and then to top that off with the USA national championships and, and international competitions. Very tough. Conrad's coach, of course, is Sadao Hamada at Stanford, along with Tong Fei. You might remember Tong Fei as one of the gymnasts from the Chinese team in the 84 Olympics in Los Angeles. It's a nice strength combination to open up with a kick to an L cross and a pull out. And that move there is a plan. Good, clean position. Now that Conrad has fulfilled his strength requirement, then he continues to swing through the routine. Those moves are called Yamawakis, invented by the Japanese gymnast, and a clean, laid-out double back this month. Again, just a hop on that landing. The four-year veteran of the national team. This is that middle sequence in the routine. That's the Yamawaki. It's a pike double front flip within the rings. And a back up rise to a straddle L. Notice the nice, clean extension in the form. He was a little low on this laid-out double back, and you notice just a little form break and a hop on the landing. Altogether, probably two tenths of a point deduction for that dismount. Conrad, by the way, was last year's Pac-10 Athlete of the Year and the all-around champion in that competition. 
He scored a 9.35. Not a bad start, actually, for Conrad. I've seen him do a little bit stronger routines, but as we mentioned, with a couple of hops on the landing, that's about the right score. Now we're getting ready for Cheney Umphrey from UCLA. Cheney, of course, trained with Ed Birch in New Mexico, and one of his training partners is Lance Ringnold, of course, one of the America's finest gymnasts as well. And we just found out Conrad's was score was corrected to a 9.65. Oh! An even better start. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, they uh, certainly added wrong on that one because uh, he went from a, a pretty decent score to a reasonably high score in one fell swoop. Congratulations, Conrad. Must have been that Stanford background. Cheney Humphrey, 5'8", 155 pounds. Cheney is one of those powerful athletes we highlighted at the top of the show. Notice his explosive takeoff. Beautiful double layout. one of the skills the judges are looking for the D elements which will help them get their risk for the bonus points another thing of course that the, ca that the judges are looking for Kathy the press to a handstand fulfills a strength requirement most of the exercise of course is built around the tumbling sequences like this a front to a tuck double back and a clean landing Kathy, although Conrad or Cheney is very explosive in his tumbling, um, the rhythm of the exercise seems to lack in terms of fluidity. So once again, a strong lift there for a tuck double back, just a short hop on the landing. I have, I have to agree with you, Bart, because if you watch the Soviet, who they're the top of the field right now in men's gymnastics, they really pay, pay close attention to the details, to the connections. Let's take a look at this laid out double back, Kathy. He has great lift off the floor, which gives him super rotation. He doesn't have to pike down. That's what the judges are looking for. On the second tumbling run, this is the front step out. Notice he drops out of the sky on that, continues through to a tuck double back. Beautiful lift and easy rotation. This is the tuck double back dismount. Once again, it's very important that the judges see good, clean height, quick rotation, and he opened up just a hair early. If you'll see, he kicked out, and of course, that caused him to take a hop on the landing. And the score for Cheney Humphrey was 9.5. Our athletes will now move to their second event. So that's it from the starting rotation in men's gymnastics here in the all-around competition. Let's go back up to Barry Tompkins. Gymnastics competition going on right down below us, and we will be back with Bart Connor and Kathy Johnson to tell you all about that right after all of this. The blind spot. Every driver has one. For some, it's not when they're driving. Kathy Johnson. Bart? Thank you again, Barry. In the, this rotation, too, we're seeing com competition on the pommel horse, the steel rings, the vault, and the parallel bars. After the first rotation, one of the juniors, Robbie Kiefer, with his 9.7 on vault, has taken the lead. Conrad Vorsanger, with that routine we saw on the still rings, 9.65 is second. Dennis Harrison and Mark Warburton, with their performances, scored 9.6. And Hanson and Umphrey are tied for fifth with 9.5. Robbie Kiefer is our leader at this point. He's getting ready now to perform on the parallel bars. He trains at the Crenshaw Athletic Club. His coach is Lance King. 17 years old, he'll be a senior at McCallum High School in Austin, Texas. Interesting story about Robbie Kiefer has a twin brother, Ricky, that's in this competition. And they were at school one day, and uh, some, Robbie got in trouble with some of his buddies, and uh, the buddies met Ricky outside and beat him up. So uh, Robbie got, uh, got off all right. Obviously, his schoolmates didn't know which one is which. In fact, I think it was Robbie that got beat up, not Ricky. Nobody knows. This is a good routine. He shows some very good difficulty in that sequence there. Two Healy twirls back to back. That 
move is called a stoop to a handstand and a very difficult dismount, a pike double backflip. Well done for the young man, Robbie Kiefer. Robbie is really impressing a lot of people. He's been on the junior elite team for three years, only 17 years old, leading at this point in the competition. Robbie has a good line in his handstand. This is the stutz before the dismount. Notice a nice clean position, and this is one of the tougher dismounts being done. It's a double back with his legs straight. Of course, that means the piked position in one short hop on the landing. The men's program committee is really trying to encourage more difficulty from the Americans so that they can be competitive with the Soviets and the rest of the world. In fact, in the recent nationals, Kathy, they up the difficulty requirements in the rules just to force the gymnasts to do a higher level. Exactly, and there were a few misses at championships, but overall I think they think it was a success. The judges are having a conference on the parallel bars score, and of course that means that the judges in this event didn't agree with some of the requirements that the gymnasts must fulfill. While we're waiting for this score, of course, let's go over to Conrad Vorsanger. He's getting ready to vault. Strong vault for Conrad. That's another one of those Kasamatsu vaults in the pike position. Way up in the air and good distance from the horse. He looked like he was a little bit off center on the mat. That might be a slight deduction. Robbie Kiefer scored a 9.3 on the parallel bars. Let's take a look at what happened on this vault, Kathy. The position actually looks good in the air, but you can see he's a little bit off center. And that will be the deduction. Slight, slight form break in the air at the in the air at the knees, but that's about ill. So Conrad Vorsanger from Stanford already completing his second of six rotations here in the team and all-around competition. Once again, he's in second place with a 9.65 in his first rotation on the still rings as we wait for his score. Just five. Here we go. 9.65 and what do we have for call? 9.45 ball. Once again, there are four teams competing here. He scored a 9.45 on that vault. So his total of 19.1 will keep him in strong position in the all-around competition, which brings up Bill Roth from Temple University, and watch the power that this young man has. Yeah. Beautiful vault. Boy, could you hear that board when he hit the board. Now, he's one of the bruisers we've been talking about right at the top of the show. He is very, very explosive. 165 pounds. He's a big boy, Kathy. Certainly is. And as we keep mentioning, all these gymnasts are on the large size, but he is really one of the biggest gymnasts here. Generally, a larger gymnast has trouble moving that big body throughout the air, but Bill is very explosive at the same time. Good height, good position, nice straight body line in the air. Little problems on the landings. We're not seeing too many stuck vaults here. It's something that the Americans really have to focus in on because at World Championships, you can't afford a tenth of a point deduction. That could be the difference between a gold and silver or meddling at all. As a matter of fact, Kathy, uh, many times the scores in the world-class competitions come down to thousands of a point. Exactly. We'll be waiting for Bill Roth's score on vault. Let's take a look at Cheney Humphrey. He's getting ready to now perform on the pommel horse, which, of course, is uh, one of the more nerve-wracking events in men's gymnastics. And Conrad is pacing, waiting to get the signal to perform this routine. This is actually one of the tougher routines for Cheney because he has a very difficult routine, but it's hard for him to really relax and just let it swing. And we just found out Bill Roth scored a 9.7 on the ball. Chaney opens with a very difficult sequence as he traveled across the horse and back using the pommels and then off the pommels and back up to the pommels. Once again, Chaney shows good amplitude. His rhythm is a little choppy, as you can see there. He gets a little stuck going up to that handstand. But once again, there's plenty of difficulty in that routine, Kathy. But Bart, it's good to see him hit the routine, because though he's not weak at all, he's sometimes inconsistent. 
We'll lead you back with Cheney on free score, but right now, let's go out to diving and Cheney. Live competition going on. We'll be back at the pool, but right now we take it to the mat and Bart Connor. Bart? Thank you once again, Barry. We're in the third rotation of six here in the men's all-around and team gymnastics competition. As you can see, after two rotations, Mark Warburton, on the strength of a 9.75 on rings, has taken the lead over two of our juniors, Dennis Harrison and Jared Hanks, Conrad Vorsanger in fourth, and Bill Roth in fifth. We're getting ready now to see Mark Warburton from the University of Nebraska. He's getting ready for his vault. Once again, the third of six performances. He's a senior at the University of Nebraska. He's an English major, and his coaches are Francis Allen and Jim Howard. This is one of the toughest events for Mark. He very good on the apparatus, four pieces of equipment, the pommel horse, rings, high bar, and parallel bars. Floor and vaulting are tough for him. He does a layout full super hard. It's very nicely done. Not quite the same height that we've seen from some of the more powerful gymnasts, but well done for him. You're right, Kathy. Actually, it was good and clean. Didn't have the virtuosity and the amplitude that the judges are looking for, but it certainly was very clean. Little bit off center, but not much. Look at the landing, though. That's really one of the first stuck vaults we've seen. How much of a deduction would that be, Kathy, of course, for the out-of-line position? I would say about a tenth of a point. And then, of course, for the lack of amplitude, you're talking to, to four-tenths of a point. And he scored a 9.45. Not a bad score for Mark Warburton on that vault, 9.45. Now we're going to go over to the Still Rings competition. This is Jared Hanks from the University of Oklahoma. Jared just had a 9.75 in palm horses, as you can see. Jared is pretty casual, always has been. He's perhaps one of the most gifted athletes in this competition, but he tends to be a little inconsistent. One day he's worth about a 9.9, .9, and the next day he's worth about a 7.9. Let's see what he can do here on the rings. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Terrific mount. That move is called a Maltese cross. It's a combination of a plange and an iron cross together. He tied for seventh in this event at the NCAAs this past year. He did a good job in keeping the ring still on that movement. It was called a whippet to a swing handstand, and it's very, very tough to keep the ring still, and he's doing a terrific job. This young man is having a great competition. That routine will score well. Competed in the festival last year, was ninth all around, sixth on vault, and won a silver medal with the team. Jared has a really good looking style. Notice how long and clean his extended arms are. Notice the form in the air on that full twisting double back. Knees tight together, just a slight hop on the landing. Otherwise, that was very clean routine. an electrical engineering major, a junior at the University of Oklahoma, and his career ambition is to be an engineer at Texas Instruments. He's also a pretty fine golfer. I see him almost every day on the golf course in Norman, Oklahoma. He shoots about 85 or 86, but he's a lot better than that in gymnastics. 9.6 for that ring routine. This young man is having a very strong all-around competition. Let's see if he can hold it together for the next three events. That's been his problem in the past. Getting ready now for Cheney Humphrey out of UCLA. Cheney is one of those powerful gymnasts as we mentioned at the top of the show. This routine is packed with strength moves. Look at the guns on this guy. Second year on the national team, kinesiology major at UCLA. A back roll to cross right to a front roll to an iron cross and a back kip to a handstand. Three very, very difficult strength moves. Good swing moves there. A slight bobble in that handstand. Very nice dismount. Excellent position in the air. Nice straight body in the twist. 
This is without question one of Cheney's best events because he has both the outrageous swing moves as well as the incredible strength moves. Here's a good opportunity to see an overhead look at what's happening on this sequence here. That's that Yamawaki, the double front within the rings. He did two in a row. The first one piked, the second one tucked, and he stopped it in the handstand. This is an unusual dismount. You rarely see this one. It's a full in to a piked back, the full being in the first twist and flip, and a clean pike back in the second flip, and he nailed it. Well, we can see why he was second on this event at the, at the recent USA Championships in Denver. 9.85 for Cheney Humphrey. Big score. Now we're getting ready to go over to the horizontal bar. Scott Keswick from Las Vegas now competing for UCLA. His coach there in Las Vegas, Dusty Ritter, has done a terrific job with this young man, teaching him not only a high level of difficulty, but something that I appreciate a great deal. Good, clean form and nice style. Oh, yeah. Scott is a very intense competitor. This opening sequence, that's a stalder. A full over the bar, right to a ginger. Perfect position. The judges are really looking for those combinations, combining difficult elements back to back. Another requirement there, that's called the Eagle Giant Swing. He has an outstanding triple. It's coming up right here. Look at that terrific form. Just opened up a little early. Beautiful form in the air. Many of the gymnasts do what's called a cowboy. They pull the legs way out to rotate faster. That's so much prettier in the air. This sequence here is two release moves back to back. The full over the bar, right to the back flip with a half twist and a perfect regrasp. That move, of course, was invented by Eberhard Ginger from West Germany a little more than 10 years ago, and it's a move that quite a few of the top gymnasts in the world use today. This triple is exciting in that it rotates very quickly, and as you mentioned, Kathy, it's a really tough thing to keep your knees that close together. Most people crank them way out to the side in what we call a cowboy position to get the rotation. Scott didn't need to do that. Scored a 9.6 on the high bar. Scott Keswick. So Scotty Keswick also having a terrific day, 28.5 at the halfway point in his all-around competition. We'll have a chance to see Scott a little bit later on the rings where he's the two-time NCAA champion, two-time U.S. champion. 9.6 for Scott Keswick on horizontal bar. One of our leaders in this competition, Bill Roth, a few moments ago competed on parallel bars, and this was his routine. Bill, once again, not only being as strong as he is, but is incredibly flexible. He does a great move here, right there, a front uprise to a move called a man up. Notice the terrific strength and flexibility in the upper body. That move was invented by Bob Mana, one of my coaches, from about 15 years ago, now coaching in the Bay Area. Kathy, it's really impressive that Bob not only has, the Bill Roth has not only terrific strength, but he's also very clean looking and nice strong position. And he scored a 9.7 with that routine. So a 9.7 and a 28.75 at the halfway point for Bill Roth. That's three rounds of gymnastics here at the men's all-around and team final. Let's go back to Barry. Okay, thanks very much, Bart. Well, this is the team competition, of course, and the great scheme of things here at the Olympic Festival. Team concept doesn't really mean very much. Well, John, it's Bart Connor and Kathy Johnson here at the Civic Center in men's gymnastics. Rotation number four is going on. You can see there Mark Warburton and Jared Hanks are tied for first. Bill Roth, Cheney Umphrey, and Conrad Vorsanger. Others of our favorites are tied for third. This is Jared Hanks, currently our leader, based on that strong performance in the steel rings. He got a 9.6. Hanks out of the University of Oklahoma coming up on one of his most powerful events, the vault. He was sixth place last year at the festival on this event. An a fairly original vault, a one-and-a-half twisting Sukahara in tucked position. Now, he was in line, as we had talked about earlier, Kathy, but a uh, huge lunge at the end of that vault. Exactly. 
This vault, once again, is the same style of Kasamatsu vaulting, and he adds an extra half twist, and he just over-rotated. It's a very difficult move to see the landing on, Kathy. It's called a blind landing, and that does make it much more difficult. You don't actually see the floor until it's right there. Very difficult to stick. So probably two to three-tenths of a point deduction on that shaky landing for Jared Hanks. And once again, Hanks having a terrific competition. It'll be interesting to see with two rotations yet to go if Hanks can hang on. He's had a problem in the past of consistency. A 9.45. Now we're going over to the horizontal bar. This is Rob Hansen, competes for the University of Minnesota. He's a local boy, and he has a very exciting high bar routine. Rob is currently eighth place in the all-around after three rotations. He competes for the University of Minnesota. He's a sophomore, and of course, they were second place in the team competition at NCAAs. Nice combination opening with the Stalders, the straddle Giants wings. Here comes his release sequence. A reverse hack with his feet together, right to a Giants wing. A little bit short on that Giant. Very nice jam. That's the Eagle Giant swing. Setting up for his dismount. And a laid out, full twisting double back. Clean routine for Rob Hansen. 18 years old, turns 19 Red next Man, month. Time, Come on. Go Red Man, Rob, of course, a member of that University of Minnesota team that got edged by the University of Nebraska by one-tenth of a point in this year's NCAA championships. That was his release move. The reverse heck with the legs together. This is the dismount. Notice he's going to do two flips at the straight body position, and then he's going to crank one twist and stay laid out. Of course, we have to mention the coach of the Minnesota team, Fred Roethlisberger, an Olympian. In fact, Fred's son, John Roethlisberger, is currently the U.S. national champion at only 18 years old. He's the winner of the elite division at last month's U.S. championships. And his sister, Marie, was the alternate in 1984 at the Olympic Games. So uh, very much a gymnastics family. As we wait on the score, there's a conference going on. Let's take a look at, uh, Kathy, I know judging is one of your favorite things. Let's uh, break down uh, how a gymnast actually gets to a perfect 10. Well, you can see the difficulty, which is the basic difficulty required, is worth 4.0. And in this competition, it's uh, competition 1B rules. They need two C elements, which are medium difficult moves, 4B elements, and 6A moves. The execution is worth 4.4. Combinations are worth 1.0. And here's what's really important, the risk, originality, and virtuosity. Without any of those three, the gymnast can only score a 9.4. Risk are the big moves, the D elements. Originality are original moves or combinations or an old skill done with an original technique. And then virtuosity, you can see extreme amplitude or ex perfect form, and that's how they get those two tenths bonus points for virtuosity. And it all totals 10.0. Nothing to it, Kathy. It always seems to be quite complicated. I've been involved in the sport for over 20 years, and uh, it never has made perfect sense to me. But one gymnast who has all the elements to score a perfect 10, this is Conrad Vorsanger, and he has a terrific combination in this routine, some outstanding difficulty. There's the move right there. Trouble. One hand slipped off the bar on the release and the regrasp of that move. How much of a deduction do you think that would be? Well, I'm guessing it'll probably be three or four tenths of a point because he broke the rhythm a little bit. There's one once again, another release move. That's the back flip with a half twist. He was a little close, probably another couple tenths of a point. But as we mentioned, they're pushing the high level of difficulty. A double twisting double back and he has a landing. How appropriate that he goes right after we talk about risk, originality, and virtuosity. He really had so much of that in that routine. You're right, Kathy. That routine had all of the necessary elements, the big tricks. Unfortunately, he gave away some points in form and execution. And as you mentioned in that scoring piece, that certainly a very critical element in gymnastics. You give away those tenths of a point, and the judges are certainly going to take them. By the way, Rob Hansen scored a 9.3 on high bar. Got the Dennis Harrison single. Here's the move, which we have 
come to know as the Ginger. It's a backflip with a half twist. He was in very close. Broke a little bit of form, and you can see right there, he had a little trouble getting back into the Giants. Now he's going to do the dismount. This is two flips and two twists in the second flip. It's called a double full out. Ooh, a little slow motion and landing. That didn't look good on the knees. No, that was certainly uh, not the safest position to be landing in. He certainly stuck it. Once again, Kathy, we talked about the fact that the judges are really What's requiring no, an outrageous question. level of difficulty, and everyone's trying so to incorporate high. their own new moves. Conrad, of course, right, did his original release move in the middle of that routine. Four. Scored a 9.4 with that originality and difficulty. Watch this routine. This is Bill Roth. Just a month ago at the U.S. Championships, he scored a perfect 10 with this routine. Way do you see the difficulty. In bar Stalder. Here's one of his big moves right here. It's a game oh. two and he misses it. Oh, that's a tough move to miss. I watched Mitch do that for years and watched him miss sometimes, and it's a tough one. This, of course, is the move invented by 1984 Olympic gold medalist Mitch Gaylord. It's a double backflip with a half twist over the bar to a regrass. But let's see if we can see what happened. He really cranked it over the bar, pulled it too much speed, and pulled it a little bit too far and you can see he missed the bar by about six inches and he's okay has to continue the routine he'll lose five tenths of a point from the judges and he's gonna do it again and he yeah. makes it incredible and Kathy as you mentioned this guy has an outrageous personality and it's very exciting to see him go for it again you rarely see that there's a triple Whoa. and You watch him in workout, all of a sudden just start dancing and clowning around with everybody. Great personality, great energy. That was amazing that he went back up and attempted that Gaylord 2. You never see that in competition. It's exciting to see that he continued this routine with a triple back that was in very close. Notice the cowboy position as he cranks his legs apart to encourage the rotation, and he nailed that landing. No. <laughs> that type of amplitude the judges are looking for for those two tens for virtuosity. Of course, the originality would come from the Gaylord, too. Bill Roth, of course, one of our bruisers that we mentioned at the top of the show. What's exciting about him is not only is he very powerful, but he has a good, clean style. He has all the flexibility. When you see a guy that's that beefy, they tend to be very tight, but he has good flexibility. 9.3 for the horizontal bar, Bill Roth. Now, while Bill was performing, Mark Warburton was over on the parallel bars. He's currently tied for first in the all-around. Go, Bill! The routine that happened just moments ago. <laughs> Under duress. That was ugly. One of Warburton's best events. It's a good combination there. Those moves are called Healy twirls, and he does them as well as anyone in the world. Look at the back toss. Good extension. He really has beautiful form, straight legs, pointed toes. That's so important at the world-class level, Kathy, because all of the gymnasts can do the big tricks. It comes down to the little things, and certainly Mark has all of the necessary elements to score big scores. And Mark Warburton scores a 9.55. So that closes out our fourth rotation in gymnastics here. It's the men's all-around and team competition on the floor of the Civic Center. Let's go back up top to Barry Tompkins. Okay, thank you very much, Bart. Will you talk about a sports team all-around competition with Bart Connor? Bart? Thank you once again, Barry. And five rotations are complete here in the men's all-around competition. We're getting ready for the sixth and final. You can see that Mark Warburton holds a slim lead over two of our bruisers, Bill Roth and Cheney Humphrey. Jared Hanks dropped to fourth, and Conrad Forsanger is in fifth after five of the six rotations. In the fifth rotation, one unfortunate incident. This is Rob Hansen, competes for the University of Minnesota. This is his last tumbling run. He had a little trouble right here. Looked like his left hand slipped off of his knee, opened up a little bit early, and he wrenched his ankle. The report is, is that he is okay. He was taken off the mat with an ice pack and a splint. He was currently seventh in the all-around, and of course, will have to drop out of the rest of the competition. 
Also in that rotation, Mark Warburton was competing on the high bar, did a terrific job scoring a 9.65 with moves like this. This is a one-arm giant swing to that ever-popular Ginger. Backflip with a half twist. Good clean form. 9.65 for Warburton, our leader. Bill Roth on floor exercise opened with a dynamic move. This is a full twisting double, but notice the twist is in the second flip. It's called a full out. Very difficult to do. There's the twist in the second flip. Great landing, a 9.7 for Bill Roth in the fifth rotation on floor exercise. So, Kathy, as we get ready for the sixth and final rotation, it's been a terrific meet so far. We've uh, seen some of our favorites like uh, Cheney Humphrey and Bill Roth do well. Mark Warburton is really having one of the best meets of his life. He certainly is. A lot of good gymnastics here. We're going to have an opportunity now to go over to the horizontal bar. This competition has been very strong for this young man, Ricky Keeper. Of course, we mentioned his brother, Robbie, at the top of the show. Both of them training in Austin, Texas with Lance King. Ricky is only 17 years old, and he's really one of the strong products of the junior developmental program that's going on in the United States. There are a lot of strong, up-and-coming young gymnasts. There's a beautiful release move there. It's a reverse heck. He had a little trouble on the swing out of the move. And then a Gaylord 2, which we saw earlier from Bill Roth. Good difficulty in this routine. Not the amplitude you want to see on those real hard skills. And, of course, he's losing form deductions here. Oh, he really topped off that jam. That jam to the handstand for the inverted giant swings. Good point, Kathy. Although the difficulty level is very high, he needs to work on polish. And, of course, that's one of the things that the junior program is really trying to emphasize now. They've been chasing the big trick for years. Most of the junior gymnasts in this country are doing a high level of difficulty. Now, really, what's very important is working on polish. Exactly. Both Ricky and Robbie have only been in gymnastics eight years, and I know that sounds like a long time, but most of the other gymnasts have been in 10 and 11 years. Ricky currently 12th place in the all-around after five rotations. This is his dismount, a laid-out double flat backflip. He does a twist in the second flip and has to pike it down a little bit. But the rest of the exercise had a couple of very big release moves, and I think this is a very important step for some of these junior gymnasts to have an opportunity to compete among the seniors. Uh, there's a lot of pressure here, Kathy, for some yeah. of these young gymnasts. It's only his first year on that junior national team, so this is a great experience. We'll be seeing more of Ricky and his brother Robbie in future competitions, only 17 years old, born four minutes apart. 9.0 for that effort on the horizontal bar for Ricky Keeper. We're getting ready now for Conrad Vorsanger. He's going to perform on the pommel horse. I don't know whether it's more difficult to finish on the pommel horse in a competition or open on it. I guess perhaps open on it. That was always the scariest for me because you have all the nerves going. And it's hard to relax. And, of course, uh, this is a tough event to settle down and really swing smoothly on. He had several minor mistakes on floor exercise and scored a 9.0. That's what dropped him from third to fifth in the last rotation. Conrad gets the single from head judge Jerry Lee. Come on, Conrad. Go, Conrad. Go, Conrad. Of course, Conrad's from Stanford University. He's a senior. Conrad moves very quickly on the horse. These are the flared circles. Notice he's doing what they call a spindle, where he spins back against the direction of the circle on the end of the horse. Single leg work, one of the requirements. Conrad traveling back across the horse without the pommels in the flared position and up to the handstand. A strong dismount. Very nice routine. He's a veteran of international competition, competed all over the world in important meets like the American Cup, the Chinichi Cup, DTB Cup. Several of the current events that are on the World Cup circuit, which is a new series for the gymnastics. And this is a really good angle to notice as he travels back across the horse in the flared position. You can see that he's not using the pommel. He climbs up to the pommel to finish his routine in a handstand and a full pirouette off. 
Good strong exercise for Conrad. He seems to be in a little bit of hurry on the pommel horse. If he could slow down a little, Kathy, I think the rhythm would be a little more impressive. Well, since everyone compares pommel horse to balance beam, I can understand why you're in a hurry to get off. And these, of course, fine overhead shots are brought to you by the Pontiac Blimp, one of the world's first indoor blimps. I've never seen one of those before. Go, first time I've ever seen one. Still Bill. Conrad scored a 9.6 on the pommel horse. Strong effort for Conrad in his final event. Now we're getting for Warburton, getting ready for Warburton. He's going to be up on the floor exercise. This is his final performance. He's our leader to this point, and Kathy, this is probably uh, the most difficult event for Mark Warburton. He's had some trouble here in the past because he's had some ankle injuries. He'll have to hit a strong routine here if he hopes to hang on to the lead. It's a very clean double back mount, but keep in mind, we talked about the level of difficulty being very important. The level of difficulty in this routine is extremely low. The form is clean. These moves here are excellent. Those are the flares up to a handstand. He gets difficulty points for those, but the level of tumbling overhaul overall is very weak, Kathy. Exactly, and he only has a .25 lead over Bill Roth. So that's going to, Bill could very well make up that ground in this last event, so he does have to hit here on the floor exercise. One of the best qualities about Mark's gymnastics is that he's so clean. I think this is something important for the junior gymnasts to see, because as we mentioned earlier with Ricky Kiefer, the junior gymnasts are tracing, chasing the big trick. They need to see that in order to compete at the world-class level with people like Mark Warburton, that they're going to need to have good style points, good presentation, good, clean, strong lines. Here's his dismount, a tuck double back. Oh, oh, no. Not only did he fall, but he fell out of bounds, which, of course, is another tenth of a point deduction. Mm -hmm. So we'll be back for the score for Mark Warburton. That could change the results dramatically here in the all-around competition. We'll be back. Daihatsu owners talk about Daihatsu from Japan. Well, the gymnastics competition continues here. We're in the sixth and final rotation. Mark Warburton had a disastrous dismount tumbling run on floor exercise, scored only an 8.8, .8, which will bounce him out of the lead. Next up, of course, is Cheney Humphrey, currently third in the all-around, and this is one of his best events, Kathy. Certainly is. He really stands to move up here with a good routine. Once again, Cheney has a very difficult routine. He would need a big score to take over the lead, though. Reverse heck with his feet together to a reverse heck again to a ginger. Three release moves in a row. Exactly what the men's program committee is trying to encourage these athletes to do. Three big moves in a row. These are the Eagle Giants wings, one of the requirements. Now notice he'll pick up a tremendous amount of speed here for the dismount. And a full in back out. that landed. Can't wait for the score. This is getting exciting here. Needs a 9.85 to take the lead, and 9.8 would tie him. Cheney. This is a terrific combination of release moves. The reverse heck, the first one with his feet together. Notice the second one, his legs will be straddled. And the third move is that Ginger, a backflip with a half twist. And of course, he wasn't going to let that get too far out. Pulled it in nice and tight and kept it moving nicely. One of the highlights of the routine, of course, was the dismount. This is a full in back out. He lays out the full in and pikes the back flip and stands it straight up and down. Waiting for the score for Cheney Humphrey, 9.85. He takes the lead with that score right there. 57.5 in the all around. In the final rotation, Cheney Humphrey comes through with a big performance on the high bar. Such a shame for Mark Warburton, who had an unbelievable competition till the very final routine. Here's Jared Hanks out of Oklahoma. Oh. Sure just knocked the wind out of him. That's a long way down, Bart. You're telling me, Kath, I've done that a few times. He's okay. Knocked the wind out of him, as you mentioned. This is the move. It's a reverse heck. He was way over. You can see he missed it by three or four inches, which actually is quite a bit on that move. Landed chest heavy, and that'll rattle you. 
Once again, he loses a half a point deduction. He'll have to continue the exercise from the point where he fell off. He does the reverse hex to a Ginger. So he completed the combination, the thing the judges were looking for. Great recovery, but he was in fourth place going into this event. We mentioned at the top of the show that Jared is one of the most talented gymnasts on the national team. He's had a problem with consistency, but look at the form and the clean position in the air. Beautiful and form, one of the best level. form in the competition. Well, there's no question that a landing like that, dropping from about 12 to 14 feet and landing chest heavy, will really rattle you, but he did a good job at getting back up, completing the exercise. This is a very good looking dismount. Look at the form in the air. That is so hard to keep your toes pointed as you twist and flip and keep your knees tight together. It's one of the exciting aspects about gymnastics is how quickly things can change. Jared Hanks will be waiting on his score there. Bill Roth was over on the pommel horse moments ago, scored a 9.7. One of the better routines of the night on the pommel horse. Jared Hanks once again, an 8.8 .8 on the high bar. That 56.35 will drop him down in the all-around competition. We know at this point that our winner is Cheney Humphrey. Bill Roth will take second place, five one hundredths of a point behind Mark Warburton on that disastrous performance on floor exercise. An 8.8 drop to 56.8. Conrad Boysanger at 56.75. And Scotty Keswick had a little trouble in his floor exercise routine, and that drops him down 56.55 and will place him fifth in the all-around. So there you have it. Last year, the silver medalist in the all-around competition, Cheney Humphrey, he gets the gold by five one-hundredths of a point. And a terrific all-around competition in a very exciting final rotation. So that's the final results from our men's gymnastics here. Let's go back to Barry. Okay, thanks very much, Bart. Well, high drama on the gymnastics floor. As you saw, Mark Warburton left the door open for Cheney. Olympic Festival on the floor behind us, the gymnastics competition. Bart Connor covered that, and Bart, you've told me time and again that this sport really is a team sport and not an individual sport as it would seem. Well, certainly, Barry, it was a terrific all-around competition as well as a team competition. We saw Cheney Humphrey come through in the last moment to score a 9.85 to win over Bill Roth by five one-hundredths of a point. Warburton ended up third with a 56.8. Vorsanger and Scotty Keswick rounded out the top five. On a negative note, Rob Hansen, who he had seen earlier from the University of Minnesota that hurt his ankle in the floor exercise, after further examination, it's been determined he has a left Achilles tendon rupture, and we hope him the best in his recovery. I'm sure he'll be having surgery soon. Well, the bruisers won out, and our number one bruiser is Cheney Humphrey, and Kathy Johnson is with him now. Thanks, Bart. A very dramatic turnaround in the final event. We have to ask Cheney, did you know that Mark had opened up the door for you going into your final event? The high bar, a great event for you. Did you know? Well, uh, I kind of had a... I sort of saw him in the, in the corner of my eye. I saw him kind of mess up. I heard the crowd go off, but that wasn't my main concern. I knew that if I just got up on the high bar and, and hit the set that I could do, that I would come out on top, and that's what happened. So. Okay, well, thank you. Congratulations. Super win here tonight. Let's go back to Bart. And congratulations once again to Cheney Humphrey for a terrific competition here in the all-around winning the gold. Let's go back out now to the Aquatic Center with John Neighbor and Steve McC